Hi, my name is Mark Dini Rusli and from Multiple University, Malaysia. Today, I would like to share one of our projects which entitled 5G V2S Communication Dynamic Spectrum Management. Welcome to Multimedia University, Cyberjaya. Multimedia University is located in Cyberjaya, is one of the states in Malaysia. And I am from Center for Wireless Technologies, which is one of the research centers in Faculty of Engineering, Multimedia University, Malaysia. Today, I would like to share four important things on the project. It's related to the long-term evolution, 5G, 6G, V2X, V2V communication, internal thing, and some of the outcome and findings. We should have a question, why all you need this? We start from this video. Let's watch this video. Yeah, this is the real things accident happens in the roads. This is due to the there is no smart system in controlling in uh, making the vehicles more better in the road system. Due to that, it can increase the accident everywhere, every every day in the world. Based on the statistic, this is the comparison of road user category for fatal cases in year 2019 and 2022 happened in Malaysia. And they have a few categories, start from motorcycle, car, pedestrians, until the bus. According to here, the motorcycle contribute to the highest fatal cases in Malaysia, and it's happened every year. Due to this, it's really motivated us to reduce the fatal cases and also the accidents, especially in Malaysia and also in Asia places. Due to that, we introduced a V2V. V2V stands for vehicle to vehicle communication. And of course, this is require the good platform, which is the 5G signals. And this is related to the Internet of Things. What is a vehicle to vehicle communication? V V V2X, they have a family. The first one is V2V. V2V is the vehicle to vehicle communication. It means that it's a, this is a communication among the vehicle. For example, between the vehicle 1 and the vehicle 2, the blue color and also the white color. And what is the V2I? is a communication between vehicle and into infrastructure. For example, here, between the car and also the bus station. What is V2P? Vehicle to pedestrian communications. This is the communication between the vehicle and also the pedestrian. The pedestrian is the people walking beside the roads, which using the mobile phone. What is V2X? is a vehicle to everything. Vehicle to everything is for example, here to the traffic lights. So it means as a driver, as a driver inside the car, you should able to aware your surrounding areas and also you should talk each other with the surrounding in order to aware and also in order to reduce the fatal cases and accidents. In other words, the communication is very important. From one vehicle to the another vehicle, communication is very important. Due to that, it really motivates to our team to introduce the V2V communication protocols. According to the uh, use cases in happened in 2021 to 2022, uh, the radio frequency spectrum become very complex. This is due to the increasing number of vehicles and of course the wireless services available everywhere. And the current lesson mobile spectrum used by the government may be, may be not sufficient. It's definitely not sufficient, especially to support the feature technology. So due to that, the V2V is introduced, especially in the 5G world, in order to uh, improve the uh, fatal cases and also the accidents in the roads. And of course, the dynamic system where a combination of license and unlicensed spectrum is not enough and inadequate to cater the problem raised to the increasing of number of vehicles everywhere. And especially this one, uh, V2B communication is very demanded. Uh, why V2B? Uh, V2B is really required uh, because this is the good concept. You can provide the communication and warnings among the vehicles 
in order to prevent the accidents from occurs. According to statistics in Malaysia, in 2021 to 2022, it's around half million, and they have a uh, vehicle registers. And due to the overwhelming amount of vehicle communication, the bus stations will face too heavy traffic to control, to monitor, to coordinate a lot of uh, wireless devices. And due to that, the dynamic spectrums and can promising a solution to increase the spectrum efficiencies. 5G is consists with the current uh, 4.5G LTE long-term evolution network to provide the high throughput in the V2V networks. And of course, the idea of meeting license and unlicensed is very important. And this is the landscape of 5G today. And uh, the dynamic spectrum is uh, able to achieve a higher level performance compared to the, uh, the aesthetic uh, spectrum. In Malaysia, we have an important government body that control the spectrum, which is the Malaysian Communication and Multimedia Commission. And of course, uh, this project is related to the smart city. When we're talking about a smart city, uh, one of them here is a, uh, we have a smart antenna of things. And of course, we have a V2V, vehicle to vehicle communications. And of course, uh, for the smart city is related to too many items, too many uh, platforms. For example, here we have other uh, like a waste management, public safety, and many more. But our focus here is only internet of things and V2V. 5G is required nowadays in order to connecting the community. For example, it's required uh, for the student, required for the workers, it's required for the university, required for the school uh, to uh, implement the very, very uh, good signals. And of course, it's used for the smart home using the uh, virtual reality, uh, for the smart energy, of course, uh, for the medical doctor to monitor the patient remotely is uh, using the 5G connection. Of course, our focus here is the V2V, vehicle to vehicle communications. According to the uh, 5G, the difference between the 5G and the 4G here, they have uh, five important uh, elements. The first one in terms of latency. Latency here uh, is around one millisecond only. Compared to the LTE for the 4 and 5G, it's around 30 to 50 milliseconds. For the throughput, is a 10 gigabit per second per connection compared to 4G is a 100 megabit per second, which is quite uh, low. For the connection, it's a thousand kilo connection per kilometer square compared with the LTE is just uh, 10 kilo. In the mobility, is a 500 kilometer power, especially for the high speed relay compared to the 4G is around 350 kilometer power, and in terms of the area traffic capacity, it's around 10 megabit per second per meter square. This is especially for the ultra dense terra cell and compare the 4G is just a small cell. And there are two important parameters, uh, which when considering the 5G is a throughput and also the air traffic capacities. Do we know? The radio spectrums uh, is very, very valuable. And this is happened today. We know today they have a lot of wireless devices, a lot of mobile phones is uh, introduced and it can increase the traffic everywhere. And uh, this is our focus here on the vehicles and also the wireless devices where it's uh, able to operate on the license spectrum, which is a uh, traditional and common methods. And the current fixed spectrum allocations used by the government is uh, unable to accommodate the growing demands. This is the main problem. And of course, the network resource are very limited and it's cost the low data rate communications. Why we need a spectrum? When look at these uh, three pictures, the first picture is showing the fixed spectrum allocation. Uh, for example, in the road system, uh, you have no choice to go to other lands. I mean, it can cause the uh, heavy traffic jams and also it can cause the delay. Compared to the dynamic spectrum, you have a flexibility to move to other lands. In other words, you are freedom to move to other band, means to make the system more efficient and less delay. And what is the in-band and also out of band? In-band here is related uh, uh, to the, in within the range. For example, here we have bandwidth 5 gigahertz. And of course, we have two type of distortion. And of course, we have two type of this, uh, distortion, in-band distortion and out-of-band distortion. 
And of course, uh, when we're talking about the spectrum, there are two types of spectrum, fixed and dynamics. In V2V, V2V communications, there are two types, fixed and dynamic. So when we will use the fixed spectrum allocations, it will use for license or unlicensed before we establish the V2V links. What, what is the dynamic spectrum allocation? It use license and, I mean, it's a good, right? it's both. And it is used uh, simultaneously. The advantage here is a uh, spectrum usability and increase the coverage area. What is a dynamic spectrum access? It suggested that uh, we use the un underutilized spectrum and spectrum portions which are not in use and call the vacant spectrum or white space. This is known as the DSA. DSA is proposed to accommodate the drawing demands of the wireless network to solve the current wireless networks. In this uh, project, we design a uh, problem formulation. Here we have a hexagon cell. The hexagon cell consists of unlicensed link, license, and also, of course, there is an interference. And they have uh, the distance between the two vehicles uh, in the short distance and also the long distance. For the short distance, it's more than 15 meter. For the short distance, it's lower than 15 meter. And of course, uh, when we design this problem, they have an uh, interference. For example, here, from one vehicle to another vehicle, and of course, from one mobile phone to another mobile phone. We design a network where uh, it's considered both license and license spectrum. And of course, our B2B uh, design here is a cost of antenna, which around 360 degree, and it has a license and also the license spectrum. And of course, there's interfering devices. And of course, this uh, B2B combination will use either one, the spectrum bands dynamically depending on the base choice. In our network designs, uh, is based on the conceptual and theoretical is a palos. Palos is the reduction of the power and is used for the long and also the short distance. This is the formula for the long and also this is the formula for the short distance. And of course, uh, we also designed the uh, interference. Uh, the first one is the palos interference for long distance and palos interference for the short distance and the interference for the long and also short distance. And also, we designed the significant uh, signal inter different noise ratio for the long distance and so the short distance where the unit is consists of the noise power density and also the total interference in networks and of course we also use the throughput uh, the throughput is the uh, how successful the, the 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 message is delivered from one uh, point to another point here we use a, a v2v for the long and so the short distance and also of course here the, we use the bandwidth with the unit is a hertz these are the, our network parameters. It consists of the uh, carry frequencies, uh, unlicensed spectrum, uh, number of interfering users, number of vehicle users, number of V2V links, and of course the number of vehicle, vehicle to vehicle links we increase from one um, and it is increased gradually. And the square radius is around uh, 500 meters and noise power density minus 74 decibel per meters. And there's a V a vehicle using equipment transmitting power power is around 26 decibel meter and cellular user equipment transmitting power is around 23 decibel meter. And this is our uh, novelty of our works. We designed the flow chart and also the algorithms. We start with the narrow parameter and which calculate things, which automatically calculating the distance between the V2 links. They have two types of uh, distance as mentioned uh, previously. For the short distance, uh, below than 15 meter between the two vehicles, for the long distance, more than 50 meter between the two vehicles. Uh, if uh, uh, is the if the distance lesser than 15 meter is considered a short distance, so it will establish the unlicensed spectrum. If no, it will use a, a V2V licensed spectrum. Some analysis based on this uh, uh, design algorithms. So we use a, a signal interference noise ratio uh, between theoretical and also our methods. And of course, we compare between the throughput at different different devices. And of course, we also compare the throughput for very distance between the V to V pairs for the proposed and also the statics uh, spectrum. And of course, we also consider the interference for the number of interfering devices between our method and so all the existing methods. In our system model, uh, our hexagon cell, as mentioned previously, the cell radius is around 500 meters. And also the V2V users here capable of supporting both license and also the license spectrum. And in this uh, project, uh, we assume the vehicle user equipment much, much uh, 
higher than serial user equipment. And of course, uh, users are distributed uniformly over the network setup. And then also, the link is increased to, really to analyze the algorithm. Based on the results, we compare here for the signal, signal uh, interference noise ratio. We found here our method is showing a better result compared with the existing one. And of course, this is valid for both short distance and also the long distance. And of course, here uh, for uh, analysis here for uh, CDF uh, community distribution function 0 0.8, Anderson is showing minus 19. 0.7 decibel meter for the license, minus 11.46 decibel meter. How about the dynamic? It's minus 5.0.4 decibel meter. I mean, this is showing a better uh, improvement compared to the existing method. We also compare for the throughput between our method and also the existing one, where here uh, the throughput is gradually decreased when the distance between the two vehicles is increased. And of course, uh, this is a uh, uh, valid for both plus and also the unlicensed spectrum. And of course, uh, we compare the throughput versus the distance between the vertical links. When we compare here, the throughput is gradually decreased uh, between uh, uh, when the increasing of the vehicle to vehicle communications. And of course, when we compare, the, our method is much, much better compared with the uh, existing method, which is uh, unlicensed spectrum versus the licensed spectrum. And of course, it's around uh, 25 to 67 improvements compared to the existing method. And also, of course, we can also compare with the unlicensed spectrum. In terms of the power loss, the power loss is increased gradually uh, when the distance between the two vehicles increase. Uh, this is due to the power reductions uh, when the two vehicle is uh, the distance is increased. And of course, we compare our method and also to the existing method when we found that our method here is showing a uh, better uh, improvements compared with the existing one. Uh, this this is uh, due to the attenuation and the, or, or the power reduction using our method is uh, lesser compared to the existing one is produce a higher attenuation. And of course, uh, we uh, compare uh, the effect of the interfering devices on, of course, as a users in the vehicle, you're also interrupted by another mobile devices. When you compare here, the throughput is gradually decreased when the distance between the vehicle to vehicle is increased. And here we uh, tested up to 40 meter. And of course, when we compare uh, among the uh, number of different devices, 5 to 20, uh, the different devices, 5 is showing uh, a lower throughput compared with the uh, uh, interfering devices, 20. And also we um, tested on the interfering device and distance here. Uh, the interference is increased gradually when the number of different users is increased. And we also tested uh, for the distance between the two vehicles, 15, 20, 25, and 30, when we found that the interference for the higher distance is showing the higher interference. From this result, it's really able uh, to make a good signal between uh, one vehicle to another vehicle, and uh, from this uh, wireless communication protocol, uh, it's, it's really uh, important for the one vehicle to communicate with another vehicle in order to away the surrounding and also in order to reduce the accident happens uh, in the route. As a conclusion, the current license spectrums may be not sufficient. This is the problem. That's why we really need a better uh, uh, wireless communication spectrum. Mod, um, uh, performance monitoring system, and of course, uh, dynamic spectrum offer better improvements. So I mean, is uh, flexibility is very important for the vehicle in order to talk with each others. And of course, um, every vehicle will suffer the interference from other uh, vehicle of, and of, also from a, another mobile devices around. And of course, uh, the uh, dynamic spectrum is uh, the good uh, platform in order to uh, support this technology. And optimizing the spectrum is very, very, very minded. That's why it was motivated in our team to introduce these novel things uh, to the uh, field. Okay, thank you very much uh, on behalf of the Multimedia University and also my teams. And Madi Merosli, again, thank you very much for your time. Thank you.